And our final team here, the Washington Wizards, add Isaiah Thomas, Ish Smith, Isaac Bonga, Jamario Jones, CJ Miles, Davies Bertans, and Mo Wagner. They draft Rui Hachimura and Admiral Schofield. They lose Trevor Ariza, Dwight Howard, Bobby Portis, Thomas Sadoransky, Jabari Parker, Jeff Green, Jonathan Simmons, and Devin Robinson. Yeah, some uh, some players there. What do you think of this Wizards team? Bad. Yep. Real bad. Uh-huh. Um, and even if you like Hachimura, which I, I'm a little bit more bullish on him than others, I, I still think that this is a disaster. Um, not sure when and if or if John Wall comes back at all. Um mm. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the Bradley Beal show and everyone around him in Washington with their new front office has made no bones about it. The fact that that's the case. And I'm kind of expecting that Beal ends up going, you know, having a mysterious injury like halfway through this season and allowing the Wizards to just full tank in the next year. They have to. They, it doesn't make sense not to trade Bradley Beal with this roster. I know that they're saying he's they're not going to trade him, but it doesn't make sense to not trade him. You literally have. You know, you have Hachimura is your other guy, and Hachimura, his upside is, you know, Antoine Jameson. Uh, Antoine Jameson yep. to me. And that's mm-hmm. not an insult, by the way. Antoine Jameson was a very, very, very good NBA player for a very long time. But, you know, it, it's not enough. You know, no. the, he, uh, Ish Smith is the starting point guard right now. <laughs> It's a really bad roster. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, it's it's lacking depth. It's lacking exciting player. Even Hachimura, like you said, Jamison. That's not. I I loved Anton Jamison, especially when he was younger. The reality is, he is not. That's not the kind of player that you get gets people in the seats. And I think that that's that's going to be part of this. But you know, I know I agree with you that they have to trade Beal, but they are just so committed to him being one of their three best players that they're just gonna. I feel like they may just stick it out. Oh my god, I I don't I, I think this has to be posturing. You could get such a gigantic deal uh in return for Bradley Beal and help kickstart the rebuild of this team. This 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 team needs to be torn down to the studs more than any other team in basketball in my mind. <laughs> they need to go full thunder is what you're saying. And then the Thunder didn't even go tear down to their studs either. So um yeah, I mean I don't know. I, I like that Orlando fit if that ends up being a possibility just in terms of names and, and, you know, potentially picks that they could get back that could end up not being at the very bottom of the round. But, you know, it's it's going to be a problem for them, for sure. But, like, this is going to be a terrible team. Would you, okay, we got to get out of here in a couple minutes, but if if you're Atlanta, would you go hard after Beal in a deal with, like, Herder, Reddish, something else? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, any team minus their best player would probably give up two of their or their three next best pieces for him right like if i'm the bulls i would trade you know not not marketing but any other two players off the roster and then another decent one for him i just don't know that that's someone that something that they would entertain unless those players were were really potential like really had potential i mean i don't know you, you brought up the hawks I, I don't know that they would be able to put together the best package maybe like the nuggets could they do something so they need to do something. I mean, yeah. is that an is that an area where you have to upgrade significantly? What's what's the cost to the Bulls? It, you know, Levine, Kobe White, and something, Carter. and and Carter. Is, you you do that? I do that. Yeah, but I I also think that Levine is going to take a little bit of a step this year. Yeah, I would do that because I think Bradley Beal is that good. Like I think when you have the chance to get one of those stars, you just have to pull the trigger. And, uh, you know, I, like I, I'm, I'm nervous about Carter's injury history and the fact that he just can't seem to stay on the court already when you, when, in, when you're in change into his career. So that's the kind of deal I would make. Yeah. Well, Detroit hat doesn't have the, I don't know if they have the pieces, but there, that's a great landing spot for him. Let him oh, play yeah. opposite Griffin. Know, that's Drummond and stuff for him. Yeah, uh, maybe if you're the Wizards. What do you want, though? You want like a bunch of bunch of pieces. Yeah. So you want you want picks from a really bad team. And then those bad teams aren't necessarily trading for Bradley Beal. So they have to have picks from other deals in the past. Ugh. Good luck, Washington. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> maybe the Heat. Maybe the Heat. Well, they said so the Heat are just going to trade for everybody. Is is what it is? They're going to bring in Chris Paul. They're going to bring in well Tyler Harrow. I hear he's now an NBA superstar. So he him for That's Bradley Beal straight up seems fair. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but yeah, yeah, not if you're Miami. I wouldn't give up Harrow right, just exactly. for Beal. The upside, I mean, he's under contract for so much longer. It's a better deal. 
<laughs> uh, all right. Well, this is obviously getting silly, and we're up against it. So uh, for Franchi Kana, I'm Chris Forwardell. This has been this week's episode of The Underdog. Thank you for listening. Actually, we'll see you back here later uh, this week for our NBA NFL Picks show. <laughs> Thanks for listening. See you later.